Hello my fellow gerbil lovers and welcome back to the gerbil vine. Thank you all so much for being here today and for supporting the gerbils and I with all of our creative videos that we put out. If our background looks a little bit different than normal, it's because I'm currently at work. Um, I am on my break if anyone from work is watching this video. I work nights and it's kind of a super slow night at work. I've got a long 11 and a half hour shift so I figured I might as well work on some of my creative projects in my free time. Um, just to kind of get a jump start on that because um, with working night shifts, I also do work eight nights in a row. I get six nights off as well, but to work those eight nights in a row, it's sort of hard to find the time in the morning um, when you have to sleep and do all of your normal house chores and stuff um, to kind of find that free time to just sit there and create the creative videos for you guys. So yeah, and I apologize for the sound as well. I am in the uh, community lunchroom and we do have some super loud vending machines. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Bex and I live in Ontario, Canada. I have two gerbils named Jerry and Dusk and we started this channel in hopes of educating and inspiring others in hopes of improving gerbil lives all over the world. So while I do strive to be the best possible gerbil owner that I can be, I definitely did not start out with the best possible care that I probably could have. I definitely don't think that I'm a perfect owner by any means. I don't know if a perfect owner exists, but I definitely try to do all that I can in order to let my gerbils live their best life possible. And I definitely always think that care can be improved upon. So for today's video, we're going to go over some of the shameful mistakes that I made when I started out on my gerbil journey and even show you guys that not everyone starts out in a good place, but that doesn't mean that you can't get there eventually. So before we go any further, please make sure that you like and subscribe so that you never miss our uploads. So while I am not proud of the fact, I definitely did not start out with good care like I currently show you guys on my channel today. Unfortunately, I was one of those people that decided to impulse buy gerbils. So my research was essentially limited to a quick Google search and what some people who worked at my local pet store told me about gerbils. Because of this, my information was somewhat misconstrued and the gerbils did not have the most ideal start to their life. So when I had initially researched on Google, there was like a 10 gallon per gerbil rule, which led me to do simple math and end up with a 20 gallon tank for two gerbils. The gerbils also ended up with a six inch wheel, which was recommended to me by the store associates. Now I was aware that they needed to have paper bedding, but I was unaware that they also needed to have aspen and hay in order to actually hold up their burrows and help them make proper structures. So they started out with just plain old KT clean and cozy, which I guess isn't the most horrible thing for gerbils, but unfortunately they only had something like three to five inches of bedding, which I know is just, it's absolutely horrible. I'm so ashamed of that. I had also started out with some plastic hides for them. I believe they were just like the living world, like plastic dome houses which we all know are unsuitable for gerbils because, hello, plastic. Um, as we all know, gerbils are crazy big chewers, so any type of plastic in their enclosure long-term, unsupervised, is not going to be an ideal option for them. The only good start that my gerbils had to life was that I recognized not to support the sale of small pet animals in pet stores because they don't come from the best of places, so I did end up getting my gerbils from a breeder, an ethical breeder at that. So that was the one good thing that I did do for them. Now, once I got my gerbils home, I quickly realized that the tank that I had bought and set up for them just was not going to work for them at all. I had them in the 20 gallon tank for maybe three weeks and it definitely was not an appropriate sized enclosure for them. A 20 gallon tank is gonna to be too small to house your gerbils in long term. And I do have a video on um, comparing different tank sizes. Um, where I compare like the 10, the 20, and the 40 gallon and I set them all up so you can actually see the space that you have and what you can actually fit in there or what you can't fit in there for the smaller tanks. So if you all are interested, you can go and check that out. I will link it above in the iCard. So anyways, I quickly upgraded them to what I thought was going to be an ideal enclosure, which was this really massive wooden uh, three-tier wooden and plexiglass enclosure. And it had, so it had different levels in it and I ended up purchasing it from Wayfair and it cost me just under $200. This was another big mistake as I quickly realized that the gerbils had started to chew the wood of the enclosure. This made me extremely nervous as I would just lay in bed at night and just listen to the sounds of them like gnawing on wood. 
Um, and it caused me to miss out on a lot of sleep because I was always getting up to go and check on them or I was always worried. I mean, I do live in a house where I have a dog and three cats. Um, so if the gerbils had managed to escape their enclosure, um, I don't think it would have had a happy ending. It got to the point where I was so freaked out that they were going to escape that I ended up clearing out the entire enclosure just to like examine and assess the damage that they were doing. Um, and it turns out that the gerbils had been crafty enough to start chewing the flat back wall, uh, the wooden panel wall, as well as the wooden corners and the wooden tray that you pull out to like clear out the bedding. So within two weeks of having this enclosure, um, the gerbils had already started to chew the wood, which is why I never recommend housing your gerbils in any sort of wood or plastic enclosure because you just never know. Like it was a flat wooden wall, like flat, and they were able to somehow get their teeth at an angle where they could gnaw and start to destroy that back wall. Um, terrifying. Now I have seen many people use this house successfully with their hamster and I think that that would be a really great home from for them provided that there was some sort of like um, guardrail or I know some people use like popsicle sticks to create like a barrier so that they can't actually fall off the levels because um, hamsters aren't really made for climbing. Um, but my gerbils were just such big chewers um, that and Another thing was that they started to scratch the plexiglass, so when you looked in, it wasn't like a clear viewing thing because it was kind of like scratched up. So it was just overall a really bad purchase and investment. The only good thing about this tank was the size of it. It was absolutely massive. Um, I think it worked out to over a thousand inches a thousand square inches of floor space which is decently sized for a pair of gerbils um, and it's obviously bigger than what I have now but it just wasn't ideal for the gerbils so it didn't really matter anyway I had this tank for a couple of weeks and I ended up upgrading them to what I currently am using which is my 40 gallon tank so in conclusion I really didn't know that much about gerbils when I started out and I'm extremely ashamed and embarrassed to admit that I impulse bought my gerbils. The research that I did on Google was not appropriate care for gerbils and I know that now that I've had them for a long time and I've been working with them and observing them and unfortunately as a new owner this isn't something that you're always going to realize right off the bat. I may have drove my husband completely mad um, with all of the upgrading I was doing because if you don't do it right, you got to keep upgrading until you get it right. Um, it is a process and it was something that I'm not going to lie, it was extremely costly. Um, it cost me a lot of money to continue making mistakes with my durable care. So now I'm at the point where everything is set up, everything is good with them habitat wise, um, so I don't need to upgrade their habitat or anything like that. So I guess if there was a takeaway from this video, it would be to not impulse buy your pets and to not believe everything that store associates or the first couple hits off Google tell you. I'm not a perfect gerbil owner and I never claim to be as I always think that people can work on or improve their care standards. Gerbils really are such cute and wonderful small animals and if you get off on the right foot and give them a good start to life, I believe that it will only strengthen your bond and passion for them. But thank you all so much for watching this video today. This definitely was a topic that I hesitated on discussing for a while just because like it's embarrassing to bring up where you started from considering like what you know now and what you currently do but I thought that it might be helpful for some people or um, I guess to let you know that if you also started out giving crap care to your gerbils it's not too late to turn it around. If there's anything you guys want to share about your gerbil journey or maybe some mistakes or upgrades that you've made feel free to drop those comments down below and engage with our growing gerbil community. As always thank you all so much for watching this video and we'll see you next time. Thank you! Bye!